we will have Mark Sanum from Better Bus Coalition to give a uh, presentation about the transportation planning efforts that they are doing here in Cincinnati uh, around public transit, and then we'll expand the conversation uh, with our regional leaders uh, after that. Please welcome Mark Sanum. Thanks. Thanks, everyone. Uh, so I'm Mark. I am the secretary and data manager of a local group called the Better Bus Coalition, which is a grassroots organization dedicated to advocating and educating on the state of Metro and how we can improve, reform, and expand public transportation in our region. So just real quick, the main problems with our public transportation system is that it effectively acts as a downtown parking and congestion redu reducer. This is because it was designed in a time where most people worked in the urban core and then went home at the end of the day outside the core. Hasn't changed much since then. Additionally, ADA compliance for persons with disabilities is at a bare minimum legally, and our region is less competitive. We're missing a few things. It's mostly related to funding, as most things are. But basically, we have an aging fleet of buses. We have a lack of routes that do not go downtown. We have a lack of service outside the core city and we have a lack of high frequency of service, except for peak service hours on the main routes. And finally, speed is an issue as well. So we think about how can we reform this system and then move on to reinvention. So not just the physical infrastructure, I mean, not just the capital infrastructure of our system, but the physical state of some of our bus stops, including some of our very busy bus stops, over there is Knowlton's Corner at Hamilton, Spring Grove, and Hoffner. It is the third busiest bus stop outside of downtown, and it is a bench in graffiti. This is the transfer point also for eight bus routes. This is being mitigated now with the construction of the Northside Transit Center, but this is emblematic of how our uh, region has thought about public transportation for so long. Um, so when we look at how we want to spend scarce public resources, on fixing our system in the most cost-effective manner and for the greatest benefit for riders in our region, we can use the data of ridership and how the system is used. So with some analysis, we found that three-quarters of all boardings in our system occur at 500 bus stops. There are about 5,000 unique bus stops in Hamilton County. And 40% of the boardings are at 100 stops, the top 100 stops. So our system is actually fairly dense in terms of which stops are used. They tend to be at intersections, main corridors, and business districts, as well as places with large densities of apartment complexes. Um, additionally, we know that there are th about 350 stops in the city that have a daily wheelchair boarding. This does not mean that the people in wheelchairs or in any other mobility assistance device do not board anywhere else, but this is where we know there's going to be a pickup every day. And as you can see, ADA compliance in terms of the stop here on the left is lacking. Through the data, we also found that on Main Street downtown, uh, about anywhere from 10 to 14,000 bus riders are moving up Main Street in the six blocks from Central Parkway, or from Government Square to Central Parkway. What this means is that with targeting these six blocks, or about half a mile, we can have profound impact on the reliability of the system and the experience of riders. Beyond reforming what we have now, we need to think big. We need to think about what can our system look like. Beyond the frequency on high capacity, high traveled routes, uh, and implementing things like bus rapid transit for moving vehicles faster through our city, and through a limited stop network, uh, we need more routes and connectivity between neighborhood centers and between job centers that are outside of the core. We need a capital replacement plan to ensure that our vehicles are always within their lifespan and can uh, be upgraded with the latest bells and whistles and technologies to make the riding experience better for customers and riders. Um, and finally, we need to look at the first and last mile issue which is if you're not within a five to 10 minute walk, you're significantly of a bus stop, you're significantly less likely to use that service. That's just because of how Americans are with walking. Um, 
several example or several things have been put out there as solutions, such as expanded bike share options, ride share options, whether that be through a partner company or a public service uh, is up for debate. But the idea is that when you are traveling on your in transit, you should have the option to move as quickly as fastly as you need through the network in order to make your own schedule. And with more options, especially outside of the higher density or medium density areas, using things like ride share and bike share, uh, this can be accommodated much more efficiently than routing bus routes through low density areas. Especially for suburban job sites where it's impractical to run a bus down every street to every corporate campus and warehouse. Um, Tank in Northern Kentucky is partnering with Boone County and the uh, CVG Airport on a project to increase bus service to the area where the warehousing and airport jobs are and from there run shuttles to take people to their final destination instead of running the bus in loops. Uh, additionally, we can integrate these costs better. Right now, you can pay for your bus fare with cash to $1.75 exact change only, um, with a stored fair value card, which you load at any ticket vending machine in the city, um, or with an app online, which you can purchase with your credit card. Now, 70% of Metro riders pay cash. And because of this, it is difficult for us to not only get more information about how the system is used and travel patterns, but there is a delay for boardings. When you're waiting behind someone who is literally paying their fare with pennies, which I have done, and it happens, uh, your bus can be delayed quite a while. So by uh, integrating more payment options, such as tap cards, contactless cards, more phone options, we can speed up boarding and, and speed up the speed of travel. And finally, with the reinvention and reform, we can realize great profits for our region and our economy. Now, I don't literally mean the balance sheet. I mean what we get from better public transit and with integration with other services. Because the point of doing all of this is not so we can have buses running down, up and down main streets and say, wow, look how cool that is, people can get around. It's so that people can get around and people can live their lives and people can work the bus system can work with your schedule in terms of the bus and other transit options. And the more people that this works for and is convenient for, the more people we can expect to use the service and therefore realize the benefits of living without personal ownership of a vehicle, which is something that we're moving towards anyway with the rise of autonomous vehicles. Um, transit, transportation affects everything. Land use is heavily correlated and causal based on transportation. You can't build a giant suburban housing development if there's no highway access because you're gonna clog the rural roads. You can't build skyscrapers if you don't have the parking or transit access. Uh, it's a capacity thing. And when we increase our capacity in our public transit system in an effective way that's useful for people and not just increasing it for the sake of increasing it, we can realize these gains without adding to our congested road networks. And the end goal of this is the impact on the economic, social, and quality li of life for our region's residents, workers, employers, everyone, visitors, anything. When people are more free to move around, when people have greater mobility, they can access more things, more opportunities, and more uh, opportunities for growth for themselves and for their families. And for so long, our region has thought of public transportation as secondary or as an afterthought. But by moving this, into the spotlight, we can have a meaningful impact, not only in the lives of people without cars, but for everyone in our future, in how we wanna be as the future Cincinnati, greater Cincinnati region. We can literally have the best bus system in the world, it's not a high bar, or not in the world, in the nation, it's not a high bar. <laughs> and we can make this a reality within most of our lifetimes, hopefully faster than that. But we have to start sometime, and the time to start is now. Thank you.
Uh, so I appreciate that, Mark. And uh, for anyone that wants more information on what they're doing, uh, you can find them online. Look up Better Bus Coalition uh, Cincinnati.